for tuning in. This is Opt Bottoms coming to you with another video review. And today we're going to be taking a look at the new Hot Toys Iron Man 3 Mark 33, otherwise known as the Silver Centurion. Part of their movie masterpiece series, this is number 213. And as you can see, it is a Sideshow exclusive. This is available at other retailers, but this being the Sideshow exclusive version, you get an extra accessory, which we'll touch on here in a little bit. Now, in Iron Man 3, there were a lot of suits that did not get a lot of screen time, but Hot Toys has still made figures of them. Silver Centurion actually got some decent screen time and Tony actually wore it for a good amount. And of all the suits that we did see, the Silver Centurion really is one of my more favorite. And I love the fact that they decided to go ahead and put it in the movie. Initially, the Iron Man Mark V was meant to sort of homage the Silver Centurion. As you remember, it's the suitcase armor, but the colors were silver and red. So when a lot of people saw that, a lot kind of thought that that was the Silver Centurion, and it wasn't. So I'm glad that they actually did go back and find a way to stick this guy into an actual film. As you can see from the packaging, you got a nice image of the figure here with a real cool, almost a Jarvis sort of background here. You uh, come to the top, Iron Man 3, Iron Man 3, Silver Centurion, Mark 33, MMS, blah, blah, blah. Come around here to the back, you got the various warnings and things. In addition to some of their contact information, uh, it is a shoebox sort of packaging, so just sliding this off like so. And then here we see uh, the cast and crew down here. It's a little bit harder to read because it kind of blends in very nicely. And then you've got an image of them here with the uh, house protocol hall of armor or wine cellar kind of display there in the background. And then it says the house party protocol, sir. And that was a quote from Jarvis. And then you just slide this out and you have the typical uh, clamshell packaging that protects the figure within. We'll cover all that here when we get to the actual figure. So without further ado, Let's get him open and see how cool he actually is. All right, guys, so here we have the Silver Centurion opened up and out of its packaging. And right out of the box, this is everything that you get. Now, specifically, if you get it from Sideshow Collectibles, because as I said, you get that exclusive Battle Damage Mark 42 helmet right there. But everything else is as you see it. So starting off with the accessories first. Now, in addition to the two closed fists that I currently have on the figure, he comes with two additional pairs of hands. The first being uh, the articulated hands with the fingers that are all individually articulated. Uh, you can see that it does have a slightly different wrist guard here, but looks good nonetheless. And I've, I've said this many, many times that these hands, I absolutely love. I think that these are the best ones that uh, Hot Toys could possibly make. If you could make these a little bit more articulated in terms of uh, getting down uh, the fingers to create more of an actual fist. I mean, that's the best that you can do in creating a fist. Now, which basically just looks like he's about to punch you with his knuckles. Now, if you could get that down a little bit further, you could probably completely replace the actual fisted hand. Uh, and I, I wouldn't mind that, honestly. Uh, so opening this back up, in, in addition to those, you do get the, uh, the separate hands that have the uh, angled section here so that you can have the repulsor blast going on if you really wanted again an absolute wonderful touch one thing that looks really very cool and i guess uh, this is something that's a little bit it's nice to have on one that's not articulated you can see the the detail here with the in the, between the fingers you got those little joints there zooming in to see that that's what i'm basically talking about uh, because you have the articulated hands as well you can see that you don't have that and I, I guess that's one benefit of having these little guys right here. I mean, you don't have to worry about losing that here with the, the articulated ones. You can have that whole thing there. So now, in addition to that, he also does come with an extra uh, battle damage chest piece that we saw at the end of the film uh, when Aldridge Killian uh, reached up and grabbed him by his chest. It kind of melted through when he grabbed it. And you can see that the actual plastic section here for the arc reactor, that's broken. But real nice detail on here. Now, uh, one thing that does kind of suck is when we actually actually saw him wearing this suit it really wasn't as clean as it is it did have a lot of battle damage such as what you already see on here uh, this tear in his chest piece came later but he still had a lot of this extra battle damage and it wasn't as shiny or cherry colored i suppose but i do like the fact that they include it because this guy's going to go in my wine cellar hall of armor sort of thing i'm not going to have him wear this but it's nice that they included something like this nonetheless now he also does have the light up feature uh you do get the batteries that are separate one thing that i am noticing is that on all of these they are uh, putting the batteries in separate little compartments uh, you do get 12 batteries and then the little uh, tool 
cool to help kind of open things up like his chest piece and things like that. You don't really need it all that much if you know where to grab on it. But uh, other than the die cast ones, they don't include screwdrivers with these. And I really wish that they did. Uh, mostly, I guess that's just a collector sort of thing. If you're going to put the batteries in, you're going to want to use a screwdriver that is the proper size. And unfortunately, that takes some testing uh, to make sure that you have the right size. And in doing so, you could potentially strip the screws, which I don't like. So I wish that they, uh, if they're going to continue to do this, I wish they would include a little extra screwdrivers with all of them. Now, I have the, or I have two of the die cast figures. I have the War Machine and the Mark 42. So I already have that screwdriver, but I also already have this little tool. So I, I don't see why they couldn't include that with other ones. That's just a personal preference, I think. Uh, because it is the Silver Centurion, he also does come with two blades that are made out of metal that are absolutely terrific. Zooming in to take a look at that, you can see that there's a nice uh, little serration right down here at the bottom, except my camera doesn't want to focus on it. There we go, something like that. Uh, you can see that nice little serration towards the end of the blade, and then it comes to a very uh, pointy tip. Uh, these can only be used with two of the three sets of hands, that being the fisted ones that are currently on them, as well as the articulated hand ones. Uh, you can't put them in the uh, the ones with the repulsor blast, uh, not that one. You can't put them in that because uh, they go in this little uh, section right there, that little gap right there, and as you can see, it's that's solid right there. You can't fit anything in there. But I mean, also, you, you got the, the, the angle thing going, so why would you want to put the blades on there? But I do like that. It is accurate to how the, the additional accessories that the actual suit had. So I really like the fact that they included these guys. He also does come with an additional portrait with Robert Downey Jr.'s face in there. I do think it's just the same uh, head sculpt that we got previously with uh, the uh, mechanic Tony. You can see a really nice paint detail with the blood. I mean, it's very accurate. I mean, even the scratch here on his nose is really very accurate. So really very nice. Uh, it, it is the same helmet that the Silver Centurion wears. Uh, one thing that's really kind of annoying, and you Iron Man collectors know that... Uh, Hot Toys does a really lousy job of gluing the magnets on here. Uh, so I'm going to have to fix that. But uh, you can see that you got the nice face shield as well. That comes around here and then you can magnetically attach that right onto the top like so. Or you can slide it down. You have to sort of take uh, this section here, tuck it under, and then bring it down. You have to put it there and then sort of tug on this bottom section just a little to get it to pop in there uh, that's kind of interesting but you do have that alternate head sculpt there and like i said it's just weird that it sticks in there not so much i mean like i said you see the little lips right there you just take that kind of lip that in there and then just kind of push that in uh the pushing kind of makes me nervous because i don't know how well the the paint is going to last with that but again uh, this is going in my hall of armor so i'm not going to be really utilizing this head too much uh, but because i do have it right here for a comparison and i mentioned this in my actual review of the python that the python utilizes some new pieces and this is the uh, head for the python and as you can see the head or the helmet is exactly the same just got different paint applications basically on here so uh, <laughs> technically this is since this came out second uh, this is the repaint so uh, i do like that i really think it's very cool uh, obviously this one doesn't light up because it's uh, got tony's head in there so yeah and that that's about it for uh, the tony stark head but again like i said this is primarily how uh, this would ever get displayed if I chose to use this. And finally, we have the Mark 42 Battle Damage Helmet. Again, this is the Sideshow exclusive, so if you did get it from them, you got this as well. What this basically recreates, and you can see there's nothing underneath it. It's completely hollow, but you can uh, kind of see the light piping coming through there. And the actual light piping really catches uh, the, the faux fire right there very nicely. When uh, the Mark 42 showed up for the battle, uh, towards the very end when he was fighting Killian, Tony utilized the, the technology in the Mark 42 to have that suit attached to Killian himself and then instructed Jarvis to blow it up. Once it did, this helmet came rolling down and it caught on fire. And you can see all that detail. I mean, just poof, it lit up from the inside with that little flame thing. I mean, absolutely very very cool. I mean, I think that that is an absolute gorgeous head sculpt and wonderful paint detail. I mean, it really looks just damaged and scarred. It's really very nice. And you just leave it there. I mean, like I said, there's nothing in it, so you can just have it sit there by itself and you can see some really cool glowing. If, if you have a nice light table such as this, just leave it on here and it would look perfect for a long time. 
And in addition to all those other accessories, you do get the uh, the display stand. It doesn't light up for anything. It is uh, fairly cheap in that regard. Uh, it does bother me that they aren't allowing these to light up. I do like that they are including the dynamic stand with it where it's uh, a flexible pillar. I, I do love that. I think that's a great touch. Uh, but... I just, I really would prefer it if this would light up. And since it doesn't, I also really would prefer it if we just got the regular uh, adjustable cradle. You know, the simple one with the little oval bottom that says Iron Man 3 has, you know, like Mark 33 across it and then has the little uh, crotch cradle thing for it. Uh, because these things take up a lot of space. They're great to have, but it really does leave a very large footprint in your, or, well, specifically in my details where I, I display all my hot toys figure so it's kind of a pain in the butt so getting this out of the way now we take a look at the actual figure and uh, as i mentioned the only thing that's really reused on this is the head we got it previously with not the python armor but everything else is brand new and really does look terrific uh the silver and red just really has a great con uh, contrast to it that really does have a very striking and immediate eye-catching look to it, I feel. I mean, one thing that you're seeing is that the uh, armor is not really all that boxy or square like uh, previous armors. It has a much more angular sort of look to it, which gives it, I, I feel, a much more sleek kind of look, making it a lot more sharp and crisp looking. I, I just really do love it. Now, the uh, other thing that was very noticeable in, in the actual movie was that he had a pair of blades. Now, uh, these are described as being vibranium blades. Whether or not that is what they actually decided to use in the movie is another story, but he does come with them. And as I mentioned, they only work on two of the three pairs of hands, one being the fisted hand that you can just see. You just wedge those in there. It's kind of difficult, at least on mine, to get this in there, and it makes me uh, concerned that it might uh, be warping it, but you get them in there fairly easily. Uh, this one's actually a little bit easier than the other hand, so I mean, that you can see that slides in there very nicely. But I mean, that is just a very cool look. As, as I said, they, they say that it's vibranium, whether or not it is, I, I, I don't know entirely. I'm just going by the Wikipedia thing for it. But all in all, though, it gives a very unique look to an, an Iron Man suit that I I don't feel we've gotten really before. I mean, a lot of the, uh, the defenses and the actual offensive capabilities of the suits have primarily been in the repulsor blasts, whether it be the unit beam that comes from his chest or the repulsors on his actual hand. This is very unique, and I really like it. Uh, the other hands that it does work with are the uh, ones with, well, well, not those ones, uh, the ones with the articulated uh, fingers themselves. You can see that the, the gap is right inside there. So, again, it's your personal preference what you choose to use. Uh, if you want to further that look, you can remove the chest piece here. Uh, it just pulls apart here. Where, where is the uh, actual? I mean, you could use the little tool, um, and that might actually be easier to do it. So, let me, all right, there we go. Just wedge that. I mean, you just, uh, again, like you just, pull it off you got uh, four different tabs on here that it attaches to then you can take this and you can put that right on there line those uh, tabs up on there and you can have that battle damage look which uh, again it's uh, it's personal preference whether or not you like that it, it doesn't I mean like I said in the actual film when Tony finally started wearing this suit uh, there was already a lot of battle damage to it uh, just in the paint and things of that nature this damage here came as I said when Killian reached up and grabbed them by that uh, chest piece and then just melted through there i do like it but again uh it's i mean well and then the uh, the actual uh helmet here has a little uh, it's not even all that battle damaged honestly um it does have a little bit uh, less of a cherryish kind of look to it so it's a little bit more worn so if you did want to put that head on there you can kind of get a little bit more of a battle damage look but for me, I, I, I don't know. It, it's, it's a cool look. I, I do dig it. Uh, it's just, I don't know. Uh, like I said, I mean, it's going to be in my Hall of Armor, so I don't really need the, the battle damage piece. And then you can see all the really nice detail underneath here. You can see that he does have a different arc reactor. He's got the triangle, vibranium, whatever it was, arc reactor. So again, just putting that on there. Uh, he does have the light up feature. You come around here to the back. This whole section here detaches pull this just like so and then you have the light switch right here you do have to put those batteries in and so i went ahead and did that you got the switch right there though that when you switch it 
that lights up. And it's a really very nicely lit up chest piece. It, it, you are getting brand new batteries. So, uh, and that's not to say that the ones that they installed previously weren't very good. It's just when I get to put them in myself, I feel like the batteries are not more new, I guess. So you do have that light up feature. You come around here to the head. You got the fingernail slot right there. You just pull that apart and then you got the little button right up in here. You can take this light up those eyes as well uh, again you can't uh, obviously light up his eyes when you had the tony stark head on there so i'll bear that in mind if you are going to choose to display it with his uh tony stark portrait on there so turning that off just so i don't kill the batteries put that back on there turn this off and i like how underneath here you can see that there is some really nice detail if you wanted to leave this off uh, that really just adds a little bit of color to it it's not a heck of a lot but uh, i mean I, I do like how there is some nice detail underneath the actual uh section right there this is kind of a pain in the butt to get back on you gotta line these holes up and for some reason i'm not good at lining up holes there we go and then just push that in there uh, again you do have the uh, repulsors here in the hand uh, take this off and then just take this got the switch right on the inside here of the the bicep flip that on and there you got the laser beam right there and then if you wanted to take the uh the repulsor blast hand put that on here i do like that the actual wrist the guards for it are built in and it actually attached uh, to the actual hand so that's not a separate piece that you have to worry about losing but you do have that uh so if you wanted to create that iconic blasting look for iron man uh, there you have it but again i don't want to kill the battery so we're gonna turn that off uh, for his articulation uh it is uh, pretty average it's it, i mean i can't complain too much uh, it, it basically has all the articulation that all the other uh, regular plastic suits have the diecast ones obviously have a little bit more but there are some improvements in this and i'll touch on that so the head does have this ball joint right here it does have a little bit of a swivel forward and back that you can get a really high look for the head uh, in case you want to do a flight pose this section down here is individually articulated as well you can get that to rotate just a little bit but uh it doesn't really rotate that much. You kind of have to actually grab hold of that to make it rotate when you're rotating the head. The head doesn't help that rotate that neck piece. Uh, the shoulders here move forward, back. They rotate all the way around. They move in and out. This section here is on a bit of a spring, so that'll flex up. This section right here is a very loose piece, but it's just designed to cover up that elbow, or I'm sorry, that shoulder section up there, which is really kind of ugly up there by itself. Uh, it rotates at the upper part. It has uh, two bends right here. I like how they've replaced that rubber section here for the elbow with a one hard plastic piece but you still have you can see two joints there you got that joint right there that rotates about that far and then the lower section brings it up just a little bit more i mean it only gives it an actual like 90 degree angle but it still has that double the elbow joint which is really nice the uh, wrist here they move forward back in and out uh, they are on ball joints as well you come down here to the waist just by itself it can rotate left and right or you can actually take it separate it just like so and then you get a little bit more of an ab crunch with it and then you get a much wider range of a rotation with it so that little section right there separating really does help especially if you wanted to make like a flying pose you can angle that back bring the head up and get a much nicer flying pose for him and that just works very nicely and like i said you get a little bit of a forward range of motion with it and a lot more side to side so collapsing that back down one thing that is new on this that i really do appreciate is the regular uh, forward and back motion is there uh, this whole section here is a little bit rubbery uh, hopefully it doesn't suffer from the dreaded pink panty sort of syndrome but a lot of the new ones really haven't it seems like the actual piece instead of being painted is molded in that color so it seems to work a little bit better but you do have that forward and back motion it does rotate at the upper part of the thigh or like i said there is a little bit of a new addition to it that you can take the entire leg slide that all the way down like so and you get a much further range of motion with it and that just really does help a lot uh, it does make one leg longer than the other but you can get some nice poses not too terrible or too extreme or anything but you get a much wider range of motion with it so collapsing that back up like i said you have the rotation you have two joints here at the knee i absolutely love how as you bring it down the uh, exposed knee bit down here has that whole metal section or what looks to be part of the suit the metal section underneath i love that i think that's terrific then you come down to the foot you got a forward and back pivot it sort of pivots side to side there's not a lot that's there's a lot more uh, bits 
bits here on the side that kind of hamper some of the actual rotation, but you can get it pivoting a little bit. And then his foot does have a bit of a pivot too. You gotta get this out of the way and then you can angle that up just ever so slightly. Come around here to the back, you do have uh, thigh sections that they come out and, and while well, that just pops off, but you can just slide that back on. But again, you can see all the nice detail on here. You can't really go too far with this. If you do, it just slides all the way out. So bring it back and then you can angle it like so. Uh, and that's really all that's meant to do, but I do like the fact that they included that extra bit of detail. It just gives it a cooler look with it. I think that's neat. So again, like I said, all the articulation that we got previously is there. Uh, it is a little bit better in terms of the hips. I think they've taken a cue from what they've done with their die cast figures. And I like seeing that incorporated uh, very, very nicely done, I think. Now I'm gonna put on his articulated fingers just because I, I prefer the articulated fingers, especially, like I said, I, I usually do the whole Hall of Armor look, so I like having the, the straight arm for it. So take that off, take this off. I can put this right inside there. That slides in there very nicely, but uh, getting this posed a little, I'm not, again, you guys have seen me pose many times. I am not very good at posing, but uh, let's get this looking kind of cool, shall we? Now, all in all, as I said in the beginning, the Silver Centurion really has been one of my favorite looking suits ever since the, the actual Iron Man 3 movie came out. So there was no question in my mind that I was gonna get this, regardless of the fact that I've been going on a, a Iron Man craze, getting every single suit possible, this was one that I absolutely knew that I was going to want. This one, in addition to the Mark 42, as well as the Heartbreaker, really are probably my favorite looking of all the suits. And I think that Hot Toys has done a terrific job with this. Uh, it's an all new figure and it really showcases the talent that they have in recreating how it looked, despite the fact that we really didn't see it. I mean, comparatively to the other suits that we've already gotten, this was on the screen a whole lot more than those ones. So they did a great job, but it's just, you get a real appreciation for all the suits and uh, just how great they look when you actually get the figure because you know that this is how it looked in the film. Now, one thing that I will say is that accessory wise, he is pretty light and compared to the price that you're paying, it does seem a bit steep. But taking in consideration that the only thing that's really reused is the actual head. And to be totally honest, I mean, we, yes, we got the Python first, but you know that this head was designed for this body. So everything here is brand new, at least what we're seeing. So I'm sure that that really helps to contribute to that higher price. If you are gonna get this, I would recommend all day long getting it through Sideshow Collectibles, specifically uh, so that you can get the exclusive Battle Damage Mark 42 helmet. I mean, this is a really great piece. Uh, it's very simple, but a lot of these extra accessories I don't really display. This one is absolutely gonna be displayed in my collection. It just really has a cool look. I mean, I'm gonna put this at the base of my Mandarin figure, which is the closest that I think we're gonna get to getting a, a Mandarin. I, for some reason, don't think that we're gonna get an Aldridge Killian figure anytime soon. So the price to what you're getting ratio does seem a little bit more skewed in this, but I still really like the figure nonetheless. As I said, it's a great look. The red and silver really has a dynamic look to it. And you know we're probably gonna get a repaint of this at some point in time in the blue steel format. So I don't think this is the last time that we're seeing this particular mold. But it's a good one and I highly do recommend picking him up. If you're just a casual collector of one six scales who don't want to go and uh, get a whole bunch of Iron Man figures, this is a nice one to add to your collection. It's different, it's unique enough, I really think it stands out and in a more modest collection, it's going to look good. If you're an Iron Man collector, it's not even a question. This is one that you need to have. As I said, this one actually appeared on screen for a decent amount of time. And that's been a big complaint with a lot of the other ones that, oh, well, we hardly ever saw the Python or the Midas armor or anything like that. And you're right, that's absolutely true. But this one, we saw. And it was pretty awesome in what we did see. So if you are interested in getting this guy, as usual, all you have to do is click on the link down there in the video description. You go to Sideshow Collectibles where you can pick this guy up and you can add him to your hall of armor today but beyond that guys that's about it so once again i want to thank you for tuning in this has been optobotomous 
Don't forget that you can keep in touch with me by liking my Facebook page at facebook.com slash teambottomus and by following me over on Twitter at twitter.com slash optobottomus. Also, I'd encourage you to check out my new website at optobottomusreviews.com where you can see all my videos from the previous week as well as see what I have coming up for future release. And finally, guys, I'd also really appreciate it that if you like this review, don't forget to please like, comment, and share this video. And until next time, I'll talk to you later.